Hey everyone. I'm gonna get started here in just a second. Just make, messing around with the camera here a little bit. Let's see here. Hey everyone, we're just going to get started here in just a minute here, I'm just wrapping a few things up before we get started with flying. The basic premise for today is to fly all three of these planes in rapid succession, just a few minutes on each, and I might try some different uh, tires for the slow poke there. So uh, we'll get started in just a moment here, guys. Uh, I'm just going to set up the dual race and expo for my Consendo because I just bound it to my GX9, so let me just do that real quick. Because I put 30% uh, expo on, on all my models, uh, just to let you know. But setting up the dual rate and expo is super simple with the uh, DX9 here. It's just um, it's a little bit like the Tyrannus, where you can actually flip the switch to tell uh, the radio what um, what switch you want it on. So I'm going to go to elevator here real quick. So go down to the switch. Um, and it's going to be on switch C here. So I just flip that switch, and now it knows which switch I want it on. We'll do rates 100% on, on zero position uh, for two. I'm going to have it down at uh, 75. And then, oops, excuse me. And at the last position, I'll have it at like 65. And then expo, I'll throw it to 30 here, like I said, on, on each. each uh, so like I said, I'm going to fly all three airplanes today, and um, we're going to start out with the Sidewinder. This is the same Sidewinder that I started out with, it's not the one that, the new one that uh, Hobby King is going to send me. So we'll start out with the um, Sidewinder, I think we'll go uh, to the Consendo uh, second, and then the, uh, the Slowpoke, um, I did some modifications to it, to the landing gear. I actually, uh, the landing gear is pretty straight up and down, it's pretty tall, so I spread the uh, landing gear out a little bit and uh, ho to hopefully bring down the front end of it just a smidge. And I also brought some, some foam tires that I think I'll be putting on as well to see if I can't get rid of the bounce when I land here. It's a little hard to, to, to land because um, we always land uphill and we always have wacky uh, wind. So I'm gonna try and, and get rid of the bounce uh, from the, uh, from the uh, slow poke. A lot of guys online I've seen have been able to fly, land it on cement just fine. Uh, we have such a short runway that we have to get it on the ground so quickly that um, we tend to bring it in a little harder than most. Like I can't just fly and then pull back elevator and just let it float, 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 float till it loses speed and this drops down really nicely. We have to land ours fairly fast because of the super short runway. So Let me just take a look at your guys' speed here real quick. Um, let's see, so I just set that all up for um, the elevator. Check all my switches here. I've got slow rate, but she's going to be moving. Okay, so this I'm going to fly second, so I'll just unplug this for now. Okay, so we will get the Sidewinder going first. Let me go ahead and get this ready to go so we're just ready to go. Um, and I also put the battery into the um, into the slow poke as well, so we're actually ready to go when it's time. Because I want to fly each plane one right after the, another. Yeah. 
All right, guys, let's, uh, let's take a look at your, anyone that's here with us today. And I'll put you guys on my head in just a second here. We have six people watching right now. Oh, JP, I cannot hear you. Okay, uh, hopefully um, when the camera is on my head that I, you guys will be able to hear me. Sorry about that. All right, so I just need to take off this mount as always. <laughs> I just need to put you guys um, on my head here. I always have a head mount that I put this on so you guys can watch my flights as I watch them. That we, we have nice ha camera tracking. All right, uh, these mounts here. No problem with the sound. Thanks guys about the sound. I, I do realize I totally forgot about that when I'm not right next to the phone that, um, that you guys can't hear me as well. I apologize for that. So if you guys missed what I was saying, I'll just go over it real quick. I'm gonna fly each airplane in rapid succession. Um, that way we can get a lot of flights in. Uh, with the slow poke, I splayed out the, um, I bent the uh, the landing gear out a little bit so it would bring the front end of the airplane down a little bit because it is quite up in the air when you, first when you take off and also when you land. So I also brought, brought some um, some different uh, foam uh, wheels. Hey, Stick Mix, how's it going, Rudy? Good to see you on the on the on the the chat here. Hey guys, how's it again? Once again here up at Kite Hill. All right, so I am going to put you guys on my head here. Uh, yeah. So let it flutter. I know. I'm gonna. So it'll be uh, the Sidewinder first, uh, the Consendo second, and the the Slowpoke third. Uh, the Slowpoke third because I want to do some modifications to it. Maybe I might throw those um those foam wheels on it. Just it shouldn't take me very long to swap them out. So I'm going to tilt this back up here like this, so you won't be able to see down what's in my hands as well, but when I get up in the air, tilting it up slightly is good for uh, actually doing the live flights, because actually you can see, because a lot of times if I put it exactly where I see, um, uh, you can't actually see what the, the airplane's doing. So, all right, let me get my, uh, my leash here, my... Let me just make sure that... Uh, the camera is fairly stable looking. Okay, yeah, usually it's a little bit uh, out of whack. So let's go ahead and get the Turney GI-10. Now guys, I did my first FPV ma uh, Maiden with this uh, uh, like last week and I totally screwed up. And uh, and um, when I recorded the flight, the FPV feed, um, I actually um, deleted it by accident, so. <laughs> So let me go to models and I'm going to go to the Sidewinder. Here we go. Okay, we're on Sidewinder. Let's go ahead and plug in. So we'll do, like I said, just a quick few minutes on each, each airplane so I, I don't bore you guys. I'm not going to fly the entire battery with you guys watching here. Um, I got a little bit of wind this morning. Um, but um, as I, as you guys might have heard, or if you saw on my channel, um, this this um, this Sidewinder I actually bought outright. You know, uh, from Hobby King, they didn't send it to me for free. Um, I am going to be getting a uh, Sidewinder from Hobby King. Uh, they're going to send me one, and I'm going to put the proper uh, prop on this. And actually, um, Hobby King uh, said for every Sidewinder person that, that got the Sidewinder, they're sending out some props, and they did send me my uh, the proper props. Uh, so this is the the tape reinforced one. So I'm going to be uh, f uh, flying this one this morning, but they are sending me another one that I'm not going to tape reinforce, and I'm going to use the proper 5045 props. Now Matt said that he's uh, he flew his, um, uh, and it still flapped on the 5045, but his frame was stressed before that because you know he flew the um, he flew his airplane, you know, and, and and got it to wobble, and so it was already a little bit stressed. So, you know, um, so basically Hobby King wanted to have me fly it um, with the stock prop that they recommend and see if, uh, if, um, if, the, if the frame wobbles again. So, uh-oh, I have a control horn out of my wing. Uh, look at that, pre-flight, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, okay, no flight for the Sidewinder. Oh man, I was kind of looking forward to flying this. <laughs> All right, guys. 
Well, it's a good reason why we do, we do uh, pre-flight checks here. So I was just uh, looking at that. I gave it a little shake and look, look at that. Darn it. I don't have any CA with me. Maybe, maybe Scott has some CA over there, but yeah, that was, that must've just come out, um, you know, some, um, me just transporting it here to the, uh, to the flight line here. Okay. So we're going to skip the sidewinder. Let me go ahead and power this guy down here. And I am using my new DX9 guys. This is not the update, you know, the, the most recent DX9. Let me go ahead and tilt you guys down just a little bit so you can see what my hands are doing here. So I, um, so I'm going to be using the DX9 for the slow poke and the, um, Consendo. The Consendo, uh, this will be my first flight with the DX9 on it because I just got it and I just bound it up this morning. So let me take that battery out. <laughs> no sidewinder this morning. I've got, I've got a, a clevis horn that ca that came out. A clevis horn po popped out of the wing. <laughs> All right. Turn that off. This is the Turner GI 10 radio. I, it's a nice radio. I actually like it a lot. How you doing? I'm doing a live stream. So in case you don't want to be on film, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> It's right. It's not. It's. I'm live streaming from my phone. So, but, <laughs> but you, if you, you let me know if you have any questions or anything. All right. So let's. Uh, we'll get the slow poke over here, and we shall. Get the... Are you gonna fly those FPV? Uh, no, not FPV. Not not this morning. Uh, I have FPV on the wing, but I can't fly that yeah. right now. I have, but I, I'm not gonna do it right now. Let's get the Consendo going here. to see here so that is um the safe mode i don't want safe mode on let's see here there we go let's see so we got as3x and that is all right here we go I actually uh, charged this battery this morning. It's a 15, a 1300 milliamp 3S. 1300? Uh, 1300, yes. Uh, charged it at six amps this morning. So it charged in like a good 10 minutes. I, I really wanted to fly this this morning so I could uh, get the, uh, get three, three airplanes flying this morning. But, oh man, too bad about the Sidewinder. I'm just got to have, put a little bit of goop on that, that hinge, uh, the clevis horn. All right, Consendo. Uh, this is my first flight with this radio. So far, no trims needed. The AS3X works great. I love the AS3X. Now, uh, some people were actually asking me about the AS3X on this airplane. Like, you know, can you still feel the thermals and, and uh, the lift in, with this airplane? And actually, I think what they did is on this is I think they actually really trimmed, they toned down the AS3X because when I'm out here slope soaring, I could, when I see the, the or if I'm thermaling, I can actually see the the wings, the wingtips lift when I'm actually in thermal lift, which is really cool. Great little plane. I, I highly suggest the, the this uh, Consendo, Consendo, Consendo. Such a weird name. I guess I looked it up and they say it's actually uh, like to ascend to the top of a mountain. Uh, it's just a little bit, it's like a weird Italian where. Uh, keep it fairly close so you guys can actually see what's going on. But the thing is super sporty, super aer aerobatic. Do a little stall turn there. Flip it around. Yeah. I turn the, uh, now I've got 100% uh, rates on the ailerons now. I really like how sporty this thing is. It's like a sporty radian, like I said, guys. Right in the sun, ouch, my eyeballs. Okay, that's 100% actually. I, I had it on 65% on rate. I, I went the wrong way with that. Let's see, how does the elevator feel? Eh, elevator feels pretty good.
Get a little rudder turns here. Like I said, I'm just trying to keep it fairly close. This is not the way I'd normally be flying this airplane. I know that when this airplane gets just a few feet away from me, it starts looking really tiny, so it's not very enjoyable to watch. So, you know, I think about you guys like that, you know? I know when I watch a video, when I see an airplane that turns into a tiny little speck that I can't even see, man, is that annoying. But what a great airplane. I'll probably crash this. I'm probably going to be, I'll be touting the, the prowess of the Consendo and I'll probably bin it right into the ground. Hashtag landed. <laughs> lovely, lovely airplane. <laughs> like I said guys, this is one of the funnest planes I own. It just does what you want it to. You can turn the AS3X completely off if you want, I believe. We go straight up towards this here. A little rudder turn. Do a little stall turn here. Yeah, buddy. I'm really, really making this thing go now. It's like full throttle there. Full throttle pull up. All right, guys, let's get over to the slow poke. I, I think I'll go ahead and land this. Uh, wind is coming kind of up at me in the hill, so I'm gonna kind of just stall land it right here on this, um, this little green patch that we have down here. This is the glider landing. And actually, let me get this up a little higher. And I, re I remember that every time I actually uh, <clears throat> fly, I actually, I always miss the landing because I don't have my head tilted down far enough. All right, let's see, I'll, what I'll do is I'll tilt my head down a little further. See if you guys can actually pick up the landing. And I kind of fly up the hill here and then over towards me a little bit. We'll have a little bit of a crosswind landing. Here we go, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Right there. Wonderful airplane, easy to land. All right, guys. All right, so um, that was pretty cool. I'm gonna hit the, the, uh... <laughs> and, all right, guys, here, here's here's our star, star track right there, the, <laughs> the Roadrunners. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> So I did what you said on the landing gear on this thing. I, I, I splayed them out a little bit more. I bent them to shape and I brought some other, uh, some foam tires to tr try on it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna check that out, see how it works. Yeah. Well, the, here, here's the thing is that we have to land this thing in such a short space that we're coming in pretty hot. Yeah. I've seen some guys, you know, bring it in on a road that are just, they just back elevator until it just barely just touches down. So it does slow down real nice like that, and it doesn't tip stall, so that's pretty nice. All right. Yeah, so we'll see if... Uh... Like the chubby, the chubby airplane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the big fatty. The slow poke. It can fly slow, but it's not particularly slow. It's kind of a funny, it's kind of a funny thing. <laughs> I am fat shaming my airplane. It needs to be fat shaming. It needs to lose some weight, most definitely. As my goal was to fly three airplanes this morning, but the uh, the Sidewinder uh, had that little failure. It was probably just hangar rash, you know. That's why I probably did. I had it probably up against my cushion, but yeah, this. This little guy pulled out of the way. Oh, I got to move. Yeah, I'll just I'll take care of it when I get back okay. to my office. But thank you. Yeah, because I I can't fly for too long. I gotta get to work too. All right. Whoa, 
And by the way, guys, I will take a look at your. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I'll take a look at your guys' comments as uh, as we go here. I'm just going to get the uh, flow poke ready. Um, like I said, I'm going to land this a few times probably, and then I'll um, then I will uh, I'll probably swap out the wheels to see if it makes a difference. Um, the wheels here are fairly hard, but they are they're, they're they're hard and they're soft at the, all at the same time. The ones I have are not actually <clears throat> that much softer. They're a little bit softer, so I'm wondering if it'll actually help my landings because we come in pretty hot. Like I said, we kind of it bounces a bit, so I'm wondering if lowering the late the landing gear and um, and uh, uh, lowering the landing gear and softening the the tires might help out with the bouncing um, of this model. So, okay, so let's go to the slow poke. Select. All right, let's plug this bad boy in. So CG for this airplane, guys, is 85 millimeters, and I like to have it rock forward just a little bit um, to make it. Um, I need to select that okay. to make it tip forward just a smidge, to make it just a tiny bit nose heavy at 85 millimeters. And I have these little uh, T pins in the wings here. This is exactly 85 millimeters. Let me just check it real quick, see if I'd like to move that battery forward just a little bit. I might. So those T-pins give you a perfect spot to just stick your fingers on there. You don't have to worry. You don't have to sit there and look underneath this and, and find out where it's at. So I think I could move that forward just a smidge. I'm going to move that battery forward just a, this like maybe by like a less than a centimeter, maybe like half a centimeter or so, just to get it to, so it'll tuck down a little bit. So it'll, it'll lean forward a little bit. That seems okay. It's pretty even right there, but I, like I said, uh, at 85 millimeters, it was just not reacting probably the way I, I want it to. So. All right, so let me just see. So got, I'll put medium rates on the ailerons, and I'll do I'll do medium rates on the elevator as well. Okay, and let's see here. And this should turn the the uh, stabilizer on. I'll have that on. I'll have it on about mid midway there so I can actually control the amount with the, so I have a Lemon RX on here it's a, it's a stabilizer you guys can see that it's pretty active right now and it's okay for this airplane because it has such big surfaces that it, it, you can do that and not have it be like too reactive so this is zero uh, percent right here and I'll put this up at 100 percent now you can see that's a lot of movement right there so so I'm gonna put it at about 50 percent right now so uh, let's let's get going on this thing. Uh, let me get you guys on my head one more time here. Hopefully you guys can see that what I was doing there. <laughs> maybe maybe not. <laughs> All right, let's get this guy going here. So like I said, guys, if the airplane is still bouncing on the landings, I am going to take. Uh, a minute and just pop those wheels off. It's just a little 1.5 millimeter grub screw and I gotta toss on those uh, those um, foam tires and see if we can't get those uh, See if we can't get the the bounce taken care of so uh, Darn it uh, I think my tail wheel's off just by a little bit here. It's kind of going to the left, so I'm gonna actually trim the rudder to the right here a little bit. This thing takes off so quickly that you doesn't you don't really have to go down the the, the uh, runway very far. So. There we are. Oh, what a cool airplane. No, we have like, right now we have like zero wind. So it is, it's, it's definitely flying really nice without that wind. That's probably the nicest takeoff off I've had with this thing. Uh, this is operating off of a 3S. So I have a timer going on there as well. Well, hey, it, 
it didn't it didn't slip out that time that, that was pretty good so it bounced but it did not what i was having problems with it would bounce and the front end would be so high i think it was still catching w wind under its wing and then it would skid out immediately after i would land so that was the first time i didn't skid out happy with that so i might not need to flip uh, change the wheels Try, try another landing here in just a second, guys. Guys and gals. So two landings and no skid out. So, so like I said, well, all I did, guys, is I took a vise and I um, bent the um, the landing gear outward, and then I leveled the 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 pegs where the where the wheels go in. So, um, so that might be a, a really nice upgrade for you guys. I don't know if it's going to be necessary for everyone. Like if you fly off of a green, uh, grass field, I don't think it's really necessary. So. Boy, I just hit a bunch of lift right there. The thing just jumped up. <laughs> See, I'm coming in one more time. Man. Well, this is a nice, refreshing way of uh, flying this airplane. Uh, yeah, it was the one thing I had the biggest complaint about. The other problem with the landing gear being so tall is it has a very high tipping point as well. So, what's that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, right here. We have some swirling stuff. Well, actually, well, it must have been right over there because as soon as I went off the runway, <laughs> yeah, we're in a little tour. I know. Oh, look at the airplane. It's doing that all on its own. It's, it's, there's a little, uh, little ground tornado going on there. Yeah, because the last time I just took off, as soon as I got up into the air, it just went, it just went like this, woo, like this. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fly out over there. I'll see if I can. See if I can get in the thermal over here. It ain't no consendo. <laughs> Can't really tell. <laughs> that was cool, yeah. Because uh, when I, if you guys remember, I, I when I got to the end of the uh, runway there, I'm like, wow, my airplane just popped really far up. It popped up about 10 feet. I'll have to watch that back on the replay. Uh, but yeah, then the the the, the little air, the little uh, the little tornado then came towards us, and it was actually giving quite a bit of up uplift there. So I'm gonna do a downwind landing here because the wind is just picking up right now. It's just a little bit. It's... Okay, so <clears throat> the um, the landing gear mod is a go, guys. I, I'm I'm surprised it actually worked. Uh, Scott actually um, gave me some great advice there last time I was flying here. There's a little bit of inverted, guys. All right, I'm gonna bring it in for a landing here, then we'll, then we'll talk, guys. So I, I don't actually have to change out the wheels. I'm pretty happy about this. Uh -oh. 
going around. Yeah, it was a little bit too fast there, most definitely. Still a tailwind landing here, but it's harder to run, go down 22 than it is four here. We're always landing on four from this direction. Oh boy, now we got a lot of wind. Down, down wind, yeah, yeah. That was really hot, and plus we just got some wind just coming this direction. So, so I had like three, four perfect landings, and so that just doing that was great because it's not standing up so tall and wanting to capsize. So, it's giving us some more flex. Yeah, it's giving much more flex too. That's a good. Idea. That's a good, so I'm not gonna switch out the tires then. It's, it's pretty good. Yeah. All right, the slow pokes in the house. All right, guys. I'm gonna sit down here on my tailgate. And I will uh, take a look at you guys' comments. And thanks everyone for joining me right now. Really, really cool to have you guys here. Hit the throttle cut. And let me just unplug this bad boy and then we'll get to taking a look at you guys, everybody's uh, comments here. I'm trying to get away from saying your guys' because it's just not good English. <laughs> uh, uh, not good English. So I do have more batteries. I would like to fly a little bit more this morning, but um, I definitely um, can't because I have work to get to. Uh, and I am my own boss uh, some, on some days, and some days I work for some people. So um, let's take a look at some comments here. I'm just going to... Yeah, yeah, Mike, I, I have thought about using a wireless mic because... Um, um, and I, I've just been looking on how to get a wireless mic into my iPhone, so... Let's just, let me just take a quick peek. Um, Stick big six, let us flutter. <clears throat> Hi Steve, uh, new wheels, same size, uh, four inch. Um, so guys, um, I have the stock wheels here. So uh, like I said, I just made the angle here a little bit more uh, aggressive as far as like uh, it being closer to the ground. And then I uh, flattened the wheel surfaces there. And uh, like I said, um, these are the wheels let show you here. These are the wheels I was gonna try. They're foam, but they're fairly firm foam. And my other reason I didn't put these on and just leave them on there to start with is the axles here are a little bit too big. I would have to like take a tin can and make a shim. So I didn't want to go to all that trouble if just doing that mod actually worked. So yeah, let's see here. Um, let's see, let me go back to your guys' questions here. That plane is total screw up from HK. Well. We will see, uh, Stickmake. Once I do get um, the Sidewinder from Hobby King, I am going to check it check it out thoroughly. And if it does flap on my flight, then I will completely um, can you know I'll be on the side of Matt. I will condone it uh, for the um, if that is the case. Uh, I will tell you guys not to buy it because um, that would uh, not be good. Okay, Drift Warrior says good evening. Where are you, Drift Warriors? <laughs> Great airplane. I like it. Slowpoke, try a 13 by 6 on 4S and it performs great. Slower and much more hooked to the prop. I will do that, Wolfgang. That's something I've been planning to do. I actually have a 4S here with me. It'd be nice to actually fly it in here, but I don't have any Velcro to put on that battery. That's one thing I don't like about this airplane. Like I said, uh, if you guys saw some of my other air, um, videos on this, I wish they would have extended this, this canopy, this pilot guy thing all the way up here so that you could actually get the battery in and out and have a, uh, a battery strap here to hold this down because all it is right now is a little little piece of velcro and it's hard to get it you can't run a lot of velcro in there because you can't actually pull it up and actually and and actually get it going the right direct uh, to pull out the battery so yeah all right let me just take a quick peek here um cg is 80 millimeters is best i've gone from 80 millimeters to 64 uh, 85 millimeters so right around there is is good uh, and Mike like a uh, Michael like I was saying I have I thought about a wireless mic I'm gonna get on that as soon as possible so I don't have these audio issues where it's got too much gain and not enough gain and then when I go straight off my iPhone mic it um, then it, when I'm far away you guys can't hear me so that's not cool 
wish you don't break uh, hopefully i don't break the cheapo rudder servo yeah the rudder, rudder servo i'm considering on the back end of the slow poke to just have a caster and have no servo attached to it um that way it'll make the rudder servo not as stressed out because it plus the the little tubes inside the airplane bend as well which gives it some it gives it a little bit of a stress relief as well but you know in my humble opinion says wolfgang besides uh all the quality issues with the servos great airplane it's very sensitive on cg settings yes i agree uh wolfgang sometimes i uh chris edwards says sometimes i use heat shrink uh to shim out the axle wheels i'm gonna do that uh chris i, I might just switch these tires out just to just to try something new alan t says hi jeff hi alan t wolfgang rumple i built i will build a battery box yeah that's cool you know really i i could actually do that I could actually glue, um, hang on a second, I could actually glue uh, this to this and do my own cutout, uh, but I would have to put another uh, rare earth magnet up here, but I think that would be a really good way of doing it. It's going to look like trash, so it's not going to look that great because it's going to look all cut up, but, but you know, the convenience of, of that battery box is, is, is non-existent, so. Drift Warrior says, a new drift video, please. I have one that's in the works, um, and the reason I haven't been uploading recently is I had some massive problems with my computer, so um, uh, I, I may have lost some footage, some really good footage that I was editing, so I might just need to start from square one. I need to see if I can find those files on my computer. Um, you know, I, I've had this 27-inch iMac, and I love the way it renders uh, 4K video, and it's, it renders things so fast, but man, I've had some fundamental problems with it where uh, I'll go to log into my uh, my computer and um, and all of a sudden it says my password is not accepted and I'm, then I have to go around and around with Apple to like and to go through it and restart things and reinstall things and it's just a pain in the butt, man. But but other than that, I love the computer for for editing and that's why why I got it. So uh, did he make the sidewinder jiggle? No, uh, Elijah French, check this out. Uh, I was just about to fly. I had it in my hand, ready to take off, and I wiggled the airplane back and forth. And uh, my um, my uh, control surface, my clevis here, popped out of the wing. So I'm glad that I wasn't up in the air when that happened. Um, pretty cool. All right, guys, um, I'm going to sign off now. I have to head to work. Um, the boss is calling, which is me right now. <laughs> I need to get to work and get some, get a few things done. So, um, thanks everyone for joining me. As always, um, uh, I will put links in the description to all these airplanes. As you guys know, that helps out my channel. I appreciate having you guys here. And I, um, I did get a little bit of flack online. I posted it in the Sidewinder um, uh, forums. Uh, a couple of people were just like, "Oh, you're just a shill for for Hobby King." Uh, Hobby King actually didn't send me this airplane. I bought I bought this one. So I'm going to be completely um, upfront with you guys. Um, when I when I test these things, I, I let you know when 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 people send me things. But I try to be as objective as I can. Even if I love a product, I will pick out three or four things that I don't like about it just to stay even keeled. If I hate a product, if I don't like it, it's not gonna stay in my my hangar. I always let you guys know. So, all right, guys. Um, with that, um, yeah, I took a little bit of flack, and some people were like, "Oh, you know, you just give it a good review, or because uh, because they're giving you stuff." Not true. And actually, Hobby King just started sending me airplanes now because I asked them. They had a lot of stuff going on with uh, with um, uh, people being employed there and and be getting unemployed. <laughs> so, yeah, we've gone we've gone. later. Uh, have a great day and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.